Hi, everyone. I'm Gary Nall. Once again, I'd like to invite you to our classroom on the air. But today, instead of a single topic, we had a lot of feedback, and I would like to cover several topics. For example, do you have hair loss? Would you like to know a natural and non-toxic way of regaining a whole head of hair? And by the way, I had male pattern baldness. Every man in my family and all my uncles on both sides of the family, that's about 15 men, all bald. I was going thinning of the hair when I was 18 years old. How is it today? My hair is shiny and thick, and I get out of the shower, there's no hair in the drain, brush my hair, no hair. How's that happen? I'll have that answer for you, for the men and women in this audience. And also, how important is it to eat your fruits and vegetables? Really important, and I'll explain why. How can we prevent death at an earlier age? Or how can we add years onto our life? It's not difficult, and I'll share a study with you on that. So I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to do several different topics. It'll be somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes. All right? Now to our classroom on the air. We're going to talk about a study from the Mayo Clinic about eating fruits and vegetables rich in calcium and potassium can prevent kidney stones. Very painful. So there is yet another reason to eat your fruits and vegetables. In fact, I find that by increasing the consumption of my fruits and vegetables beyond what the USDA suggests, they're saying about five and a half servings a day. I'm saying a minimum of six servings and ideally 10 servings. Now, of course, you can include a serving if you have a bunch of fruits and vegetables in a juice or a smoothie because you could use a lot of celery and cucumber, more than what you would actually eat in a salad, and it gives you maybe four ounces of juice, but it's really powerful. It's great for helping to slightly alkalize the blood, and that prevents some of the highly acidic beverages and foods that we consume, like meat and alcohol and sugars, from causing all kinds of disruption in our intestines. So eat your fruits and vegetables, ideally locally grown. Ideally, grow some of them yourself, either in your backyard or even in, in your home. You can take over a room and set up a mini hydroponic on a counter. You can grow sprouts, microgreens, and these are wonderful. And there's at least a hundred, I repeat, a hundred different fruits and vegetables and edible flowers you can consume. It doesn't take long to grow them, and they're under your control, so no insects, and uh, they don't take a lot of maintenance. But boy, are they good for you. Now, people who've developed kidney stones are all too aware of how much pain they can cause, with some comparing it to giving birth. Kidney stones are also a, have a connection to chronic kidney disease, osteoporosis, and cardiovascular disease. For those who develop a kidney stone for the first time, the likelihood of a recurrence is 30% within five years. And that's almost always where I find people who I'm counseling who have kidney stones doing that right now, in fact. Just counseled someone this morning. And uh, they had a high protein diet. That's a big, bad situation in and of itself. And I said, well, how many meals a day do you consume? Oh, just one a day at noon. Big meal. And I said, why don't you have breakfast and dinner? Light dinner, big breakfast, and uh, a moderate lunch. Well, because, um, you know, I want to lose weight and also I'm working out and everyone in the gym says you got to eat a lot of protein. So I'm eating a lot of protein. Well, when we did an actual analysis, the person was consuming about 400 grams of protein in one meal. Little wonder that they had kidney stones. You should be consuming around 50 to 60 grams. So they're consuming an entire week's worth of protein in one meal. Not good. And protein is not stored, so you should eat it three times a day. A smoothie is good. A plant-based uh, protein is also better, easier on the system. But according to the Mayo Clinic in this, uh, in this study, the results indicate that consuming foods rich in calcium and potassium, that's your fruits and vegetables, uh, and by the way, coconut water is terrific. One glass of coconut water, there's nothing in it, just coconut, uh, the immature coconut, 
uh, gives you almost 400 gram, milligrams of uh, potassium. That's a lot, and that's good. And uh, anyhow, it helps uh, avert a second bout with kidney stones. So just one more reason to have your fruits and vegetables. You're less likely then to get the kidney stones, all right? And less likely to have a recurrence. I know vegans who've never had a kidney stone in their life. There's no reason to have that. But things likely to give you those kidney stones, dehydration. You're not, uh, you're not consuming enough fluids. Keep your body fluid level up high. Too little calcium and potassium and magnesium and high levels of caffeine and phytate, P-H-Y-T-A-T-E. And uh, so that's one of the ways you end up with kidney stones. And soft drinks, stay away from soft drinks. Stay away from all carbonated beverages. All right? And that'll be good for you. Now, another study, and this is from laboratories, uh, a laboratory in France, nutritional supplements shown to be effective in reducing female hair loss. Well, that's a big deal. Hair loss is a distressing thing for anyone. Every man in my family suffer from male pattern baldness. Now, when I talk about all the men in my family, I'm not just talking about a my immediate family, all males, but I'm also talking about my aunts and uncles, my mother and father's uh, uncles or their brothers. And they all had uh, baldness. I'm even thinking of the heroin went in their 20s and 30s. They had the gene that precipitates this. So it was one evening when I was at the Institute of Applied Biology one night, and I'm thinking, why is my hair thinning? I'm a vegan. I take all the right supplements. Uh, I don't drink, never drink alcohol, take drugs. Um, you know, I exercise. And then I'm thinking, what is the problem here and with every disease? It is, and this is a principle I came up with at that time, and I live by it today because it works. I call it the laws of compensation, which means to the degree that you have anything that is out of balance, you must exceed the imbalance in order to create a new balance. And that's because no two energies can take equal space at the same time. There's always this polarity of opposites. And whatever is the most powerful in that given moment dominates. And that's why, in the larger context of our life, good people can do bad things. Smart people can do stupid things. Kind people can do unkind things. But it's also true in the body. What happens when we start thinking, oh, no, I'm, I'm okay. I, I don't need to exercise every day. That's extreme. And then when you find out they're not exercising at all, maybe where they walk to and from, work, whatever, but no systematic exercise program. Now they're out of balance. Now when they're thinking, well, what's an extra slice of bread a day? It's no big deal. It's just one slice of bread. At the end of the year, that represents nine pounds extra on the body from one extra slice of bread a day because it accumulates. Remember, everything in life is an accumulation, an accumulation of pain, accumulation of disease, accumulation of health, happiness, distress. So you have to look at not one moment in your life, but a pattern of behavior that one moment becomes two, three, four, and 10,000. So I then started doing this in the laboratory. Instead of giving mice water, I gave them fresh made organic juices. And suddenly their, the coats on their bodies were different. None were overweight. And I took them all out of cages. I don't believe in cages. And they were running all over the third floor. No one would come upstairs. <laughs> now the other side just come upstairs because one time one of the the lead scientist downstairs where they were doing all the cancer research uh, came up and uh, he said, Gary, and I turned around, I was at my desk and I had three rats on this shoulder and two on this. They came up there every day, same rats. By the way, in 38 years of working there, never once was I ever bitten or scratched, never an aggressive rat. But I gave them this whole floor of a building to run around in. And also everyone needs uh, challenges. Without challenges, we lose our spark. We lose our passion. We lose that uh, verve that wants to do something, right? And the more comfortable we become in our lifestyle, the less adventurous we become. Well, why go 
on a hike on a mountain. I don't need to do that. I, I'll, when I want to do that, I'll go to the gym, walk on a treadmill. We began to think more monotheistically, meaning what shouldn't I do that would cause me any stress or discomfort? And so we shrink our lives way down instead of expanding them out. When we're young, we want to expand life. We're curious. We want to see things, do things. The older we get, the less that becomes an issue. So what happens is the dominant energy in our life is security, comfort. But if comfort is your dominant energy, then anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, like let's go to the farmer's market, get some fresh, organic, locally grown produce. Nah, I'll call in for a pizza. All right, let's go out. It's a nice day, nice brisk day. No, it's a little cold. And so anything that would help us becomes a hindrance and we immediately dismiss it. How about doing some homework before we vote for someone to see how they have they voted? What, where have they come down on all the important issues of our life? Now, why? They're a good Republican. They're a good Democrat. Uh, you know, I trust them. And then when something goes wrong, then you start getting, ang getting angry. Because within your comfort, critical thinking, scholarship, study is no longer applicable. You no longer want it, which is proven by how few people who graduate from college ever read another nonfiction book the rest of their lives. So this whole principle I had was you've got to do more in the positive to not just equal what you've done in the negative, but to exceed it. So everything in your life becomes the dominant positive energy. And that's how all of my work and healing occurs. So that's why I don't talk about the symptoms or the disease. I talk about what's wrong in your life. Where is the imbalance? How did it get there? And do you understand the lessons of that so you can only keep things positive? Keep reinforcing the positive day after day after day, and it works. And by the way, uh, Eutrice Lead, um, an icon in New York Radio on WBAI for 23 years and Progressive Radio Network for 17 years, this morning, her fasting blood sugar, with no medications, 80. That's normal. Wow. When she came, two medications for uh, blood pressure and diabetes, uh, no, three for blood pressure, uncontrolled blood pressure, even with three medications, and two medications for diabetes, 202 would be the lowest, and it could go up to 350. Now, 80. Just want to share that with you. All with no medications, just lifestyle, and keep repeating positive behavior, positive behavior, day in, day out, and it works. So anyhow, so I applied the same principle to hair loss because I was losing my hair. And now look at my hair. I mean, my hair is thick. I have to get it cut every week. Just, I mean, you, you see, it's it, I got a full head of hair, and it's getting back to my. I had auburn hair. Uh, light brown when I was growing up, and then when I was an adult, for some reason, it's turned darker. And now when I'm out in the sun all day, it turns a little bit lighter. But it's my natural hair, full, strong. I can brush my hair for 20 minutes, never get a hair in the brush, not in the shower. So what did I do? And this is what this scientific lab did in small part. So we know we're distressed when our hair is thinning and becoming brittle and breaking and uh, particularly so for women. Uh, but scientists have found that taking a nutritional supplement can improve the overall scalp coverage and hair condition. The team made up of researchers in France, Italy, and the United States found that a combination of specific omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids and antioxidants were the ticket. And uh, this helped them treat female pattern hair loss. And uh, it's a broad term for the decrease in central scalp density that is frequently observed after puberty in females and characterized by a diffuse reduction in hair density, your hair that becomes thinner, which mainly affects the crown and the frontal scalp. A six-month use of the omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids and antioxidants acts efficiently against hair loss to improve hair density. Now, I found, and this was published in the Journal of Cosmetic Dermatology, a major journal, uh, so there is no question that 
if you exceed what you were deficient in, in the way of vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients uh, that are frequently used in large uh, range of uh, products claiming to be efficient, they can make a difference. But vitamin C, lycopene, black currant seed oil, and vitamin E with tocotrienols and folic acid, that was the ticket in vitamin D as well. Suddenly your hair is shiny. There's a natural softness. It's full. It's anchored. It's healthy. But you have to exceed the deficiencies. And there's where that principle of, of, uh, of the laws of compensation. So most people don't have good diets. Most people don't take the right supplements. As a result, <clears throat> over a period of time, they lose their hair. They also, their fingernails are no longer hard and shiny and, uh, and clear. And toenails, same way, they're more susceptible to funguses because their immune system's down. They're nutrient deficient, vitamin D3, folic acid in particular, and uh, B1, B2, B3, uh, B6, B12, all important. Vitamin C, lycopene, and again, black, uh, current black current B L A C K C U R R A N T black currents. Those are the currents. You got red currents. You got black currents. The black current oil, and watch your hair over six months. But you got to take it daily. It can't just be once in a while. And you can't just take one of those things. They make a three and six fatty acids. Got to take them every day. And suddenly, what you were deficient in, you now are compensating. And now eating these every day, they dominate. So healthy input now changes the genetic weakness. So you literally, through epigenetics, can change the genetic weakness. I did it for years in rats. Rats that live 12 months, I got to live for a year and a half. In some rats, two years. Playing certain music that was very soft, a flute music, they were very relaxed. Putting their food in places where they had to go and find it, uh, that's in, if you have animals, and I have sanctuaries, I've had sanctuaries upstate uh, starting in 51 years ago at the Fertiler Farm. All of you who came up, thousands of you came up, you saw that we would teach animal husbandry from a vegan perspective, how to love animals but not eat them. And, uh, and the association would have people come up who were meat eaters, and I'd ask them, what kind of meat do you like? Do you like veal? Yeah, veal, 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 parmesan. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Here's a veal calf that we were, had rescued. There are 10 veal calves every day that you're here this week. Spend time with a calf. Well, someone had never been around an animal before. They went over. And next thing you know, half the day they're not at the workshops. Where's Bud? Well, Bud's over there. You know, he's hanging out with that little veal calf. Now go over, and there's Bud uh, in the barn leaning against a bale of hay, and that little veal calf has curled itself up in its lap, just looking up with those wonderful uh, big eyes. And he's just, he's, I'll never eat another uh, animal again, because he didn't know that connection, that love. So in any case, uh, we have to frequently see what we're doing wrong, and then allow ourselves an opportunity to transition to a healthier way of dealing with dealing with animals, dealing with each other. I've said many times my entire life that everyone is invited to sit at my table. I exclude no no, one, no matter what the color of our skin, cut ourselves. You don't have black blood, yellow blood, orange blood. You have red blood. We are so connected if we choose to be. And if you choose to be connected, then you begin to harmonize with what is unique and special in that person that is also unique and special in yourself. The common, the common understanding of life. We all share very similar things just from different backgrounds, different cultures. And that's why there's absolutely no need for hatred, bigotry, uh, racism, anti-Semitism. There's no need for that. You know, I want to see the Palestinian and the Israeli Jewish citizens living together in harmony. They once did, by the way, but I won't go into that lesson now. I don't want to see conflict. So what do we have to do to harmonize? Same principle. 
overcompensate with love, overcompensate with compassion and empathy, jump in and help where there's a problem. Don't look at a person, whether they're rich or poor, their class status, uh, their religious beliefs, their person needs help. Start with that. Now see if that law of compensation doesn't make sense to you. All right? Oh, and by the way, Utree Sleet, as of this morning, has lost 65 pounds. Got a lot to go, but 65 pounds, and that's important. Oh, and her cancer, no metastasis in her lungs. Oh, and her kidneys, acute kidney failure in both kidneys. When she arrived, normal kidneys, according to the two different medical exams and her MRIs. And, oh, her liver, normal. So, major improvements, and we're happy for her. Now, one more uh, thing, and then we'll go to some other things. I talked about uh, six months ago about try to get in 10,000 steps a day. Ideally, make half those steps or 5,000 brisk. In other words, walk fast. And about maybe 2,000 brisk steps, walk really fast. I mean, and when you're walking, you, you make a fist and re relax, fist and relax, fist and relax, because that's strengthening, that's strengthening the arms, your biceps, your triceps, your latitimus, your deltoids. You, when you're walking, and you're making a fist and relax, fist and relax, fist and relax. That's helping produce muscle and reduce fat. But now here's a study from Kyoto University, as well as the University of California, Los Angeles, that says, quote, walking 8,000 steps, or about four miles, 6.4 uh, kilometers, one or two days a week, may significantly reduce the risk of early death. How about that? That was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association's Network Open. So if they're saying 8,000 steps two to three times a week, and I'm suggesting start at 10,000 steps and go to 20,000 seven days a week, then just imagine how much healthier you're going to be but I'm happy that they came up with that study. At least it shows that people have got to get away from sitting all the time. All right? Thank you all for watching today. And remember, if you go to, or watching this now on Gary Nall YouTube, or Rumble, and look under Gary Nall Film Library, or Odyssey, I post these all the time, and we have hundreds of them up there. And on YouTube, thousands of different uh, programs and interesting film clips. They're all free. Please take advantage of that. And every day, if you want to hear me on the radio, live at noon, Eastern Standard Time, go to prn.live. That stands for Progressive Radio Network, prn.live. And I'm on noon uh, to one o'clock, Monday to Friday. But also, we have dozens of the finest, most progressive minds who are all seeking the truth, who have long reputations like Ralph Nader, for example, and Abby Martin and others of finding the truth. So I think you'll enjoy that as well. Thank you for watching. Please share this with other people.